Hello and let's talk about the controversy inside the All India Football Federation. The body which runs football in the country had approached the court last month asking that its present executive committee be allowed to be in place till fresh elections are held and these elections would be held after a new constitution is formulated. The move by the AIFF has not been appreciated by many of the state bodies which have in fact demanded that the upcoming annual general body of the AIFF discuss the delay and if possible fix a date for the elections. Clearly a lot is going on inside the organisation. Leslie Xavier talks to sports journalist Jaydeep Basu who wrote an article for NewsClick on this issue. Hello Jaydeep, welcome. Welcome, welcome. That's, Thank you. That's, that's quite a stirring story that you gave NewsClick. Uh, <laughs> a lot of churn, a lot of churn happening in in the AIF of in Indian football in general and related to the election and the running of the sport rather than the actual game, which is how ideally it should be, but Sadly, that's not the case. Newsmakers are the administrators and not the players. But yeah, so let, before before we get into the chat on discussion on these things, I'll just uh, give out a gist of what exactly has happened. So the All India Football Federation, which runs the sport in the country, it has uh, its election was due this December for the executive committee, which is led by Praful Patel, who is the president. So the AFF has convened a AGM on the 21st, which traditionally that's when the elections happen. But at the same time, they also have appealed to the Supreme Court to let them let the current executive committee continue uh, its tenure because there is no constitution uh, for the AIFF yet. And this constitution story has happened because the Supreme Court had appointed a committee to formulate a constitution which is in accordance with the National Sports Co uh, Code. Earlier, the AFF's running was not uh, in accordance with the code. So there is a lot of backstory attached to it and larger implications as well. So your story, I mean, which which we which we brought out via news click, is that uh, 21 state associations have raised their voice against this and they want the election date to be fixed. So they want the elections to be an agenda for the AGM that is happening on, on the 21st and possibly they want the executive committee to decide on a date when the elections could be held. So that creates a tricky quest, uh, position for the AF of Honchos because they, they are trying to stall the election. So can you just shed more light into this, uh, this entire episode? Yeah, because uh, uh, first of all, as uh, uh, it is, it is uh, very suspicious. See, AFF is saying that since the new new constitution has not come, which is due from two thousand seventeen onwards, the court couldn't give it. So let us let us uh, wait for the and then we'll hold the election. But it is very suspicious that AFF has suddenly woken up one month before the uh, elections, and it is also very suspicious that AFF. Instead of uh, yeah, yeah, they have they have the way they have ordered the plea to the prayer to the court, there where they have said key, uh, please allow the uh, in that case please allow the, uh, the the present committee to continue or to or, or to extend their man mandate. They have, could have easily said, as some people has pointed out, that please allow us to hold the election on the strength of the previous previous constitution on which the current current on which the current body is standing. And then we will see what will happen. And okay. uh, uh, huh, yeah, at the There's same slight, time, slight, slight problem to that, right? Yeah, that is a slight problem to that. The, so it has, it has been, and why didn't they go six months before? Why they have come now? This is uh, a lot of people are asking that. And secondly, the, the most important thing is that if the elections are held, then Mr. Patel is ineligible to contest for any post in the in AFF for the next four years, because as per the sports code, national sports code 2011, he has completed his three terms and 12 years as the president. So under no circumstances, he can continue as the president. And only way he can continue as the president, if, if the court allows this current current committee to continue for some more time. So there, there is this uh, uh, justification which is doing the rounds uh, via the mechanism the, by which uh, PR is managed by the AFF. And one of this is, is the spin that FIFA might ban 
the Indian body if if it doesn't have an executive committee. So the option is to either hold the election, which they don't want to, like you mentioned, or let them continue so that the ban can be prevented and things can run the way it is still still. But then uh, there is a question of what happened to the committee and what happened to the constitution that they were supposed to. It, I understand that the Supreme Court had appointed a two-member committee to form the constitution, right? So, which can be followed by the AIFF in, and the election should have been held now. Of course, pandemic situation, lockdown, all these things can be cited, but there is a larger story to it, I believe, because in the media, it has come out that the committee head, which was former chief election commissioner of India, S.Y. Qureshi, he has said that he had already submitted a report to the Supreme Court in February of this year. Until now, the court has not taken it up. So there is some kind of a missing link over here. Uh, missing link in this court courts uh, they say ki court has uh, the uh, the mr Qureshi, who is uh, heading the committee along with bhaskar ganguly former india captain uh, he he has categorically said i have submitted the report so if he has submitted the report and it is always it is with the court see court should be court can be told to hurry up court can be asked to uh, requested to hurry up so that they can hold their election you go to court and say, Ki, uh, please allow us to extend it. That itself is a, and I, I, I will say two things. One, I, uh, one thing is, a, is a, that, that the FIFA ban might come. It is, mm -hmm. a, it is nothing but a hoax. H-O-A-X, hoax, mm -hmm. nothing else. This is, this is a kind of threat which every national federation gives whenever they are in trouble. You go to IUA, I will say, oh, if we don't do that, then IOC will come down heavily on us. It is the same thing. Why should, and first of all, you tell me, if, if you don't the election, why shouldn't they hold the election? If the FIFA man comes without holding election, there are more reasons the, the election should be held, isn't it? Yes. Ah, another thing, they are saying COVID-19 situation. COVID-19 situation is happening for COVID-19. Everything is happening. Everything is happening. What not is happening? ISL is happening. I League is happening, which is which is credit to uh, All India Football Federation. They are doing some some master scores. That is happening. Only the elections cannot be held, and and uh, uh, all other federations are holding elections. Only few days back, we know that Athletic Federation held their election in Gurgaon, where Adil Sumariwala was elected the president. So, because of COVID-19 situation, they cannot. And what is what is what is the Delhi government uh, rule? I think 50 people. I, isn't it 50 or 100 yeah. people or uh, something like that? I don't remember. I think 200 people or whatever. And how many members they have? They have 36 members. I know each member member association brings two to three people. Even it brings its 100 people. And 100 people, it add another 50 with it. We can't can't you get 150 people together? So to say that because of the pandemic and because of the COVID-19 COVID situation, it gives you a feeling there is something wrong behind it. So that's the same thing that has been cited by the state. Uh, some of the officials uh, that you spoke to, I believe that they were they were very upset how, with how things have been working uh, at, the, at the Federation. Can you just, uh, can you just uh, uh, elaborate a little on what exactly is the feeling from these state association officials who have stood up now, decided to dissent, uh, decided to call for the election. Take on, yeah. take on pretty, pretty big people in the, in the football fraternity that way. See, I will, I will uh, break it down like this. The, I have spoken to quite a few uh, associations and I have asked, asked them only one question, why you have to write this letter? Are you, are you feeling so cornered? So they said not exactly, but there are a couple of things which is really, really putting us off. That is the when the letter came for that we have moved court. Wasn't it the wasn't it the responsibility of the federation uh, to inform the uh, associations before moving court, or at least they could have called an executive committee meeting and and uh, uh, should have should have asked their opinion before moving court. Moving court, you have to pay the lawyer. Moving court is expensive. It does. It's not. It's not. It doesn't come uh, cheap. 
it comes expensive. And I, I'm sure AFF is paying very heavily on, uh, on uh, spending heavily on its lawyers and its legal opinion, uh, legal team, and everything, which is costly. No, I'm not blaming AFF. So they said they could have asked us. And secondly, secondly, uh, as if see in this COVID situation, they say ki COVID-19 situation when FIFA grant has come you make uh, so much of, uh, I won't say fuss, but you make so many rules and regulations for, for spending the uh, FIFA, for distributing the FIFA grant. You ask the uh, state association to give undertaking, to, to give proof of so and so and so and so and so and so, like CRS activities and all. But when it comes to uh, spending on the legal teams, then there is no, uh, there is no bar on it. And every day you say there is no money, no money because of the situation, which is which is of course accepted. You couldn't hold under 16 national championship, under 19 national championship, senior national championship, women under national under 16, women under 19, women senior national championship. Nothing could be held. But while uh, on 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 the on the point of extending the mandate of the uh, present committee, then you can spend very freely on it. So that's the question they are asking. They are um, feeling, this, yeah. They are feeling. They are feeling left out of. I mean, they are feeling that uh, things are not democratic anymore. That's what I believe. But the sad reality is that Indian sport, most of the federations, these things happen. So there is a backstory again with the thing. Uh, Rahul Mehra, the lawyer who had filed the original PIL, which led to the uh, AFF uh, uh, situation, which is right now when he. Filed the PIL in Delhi High Court, and Delhi High Court uh, uh, decided to pull up the AFF official saying uh, that things should be run as per the sports code. That's that's where it all began. Rahul Mehra is again the person behind the PILs that has led to the suspension of 54 national sports federation, uh, uh, taking away of the recognition of 54 national sports federation by the sports ministry which was again directed by the Delhi High Court post the PIL. Uh, and these federations are run as fiefdom of the, of the people who are, personal fiefdom of the, of the people who are running the show for, for ages. And uh, the Indian Olympic Association is, is, is party to it in, in many ways because it's, it's, again a, it's again a political electoral game that happens because uh, the more the federation officials that they have under their control, the better they for them to run the show as far as the Olympic Association is concerned. So it's it's kind of like a huge mess. And if you look at individual federations, you mentioned that the federation uh, election that are happening. Of course, the same person won. That's that's uh, Sumariwala was at, has been at the helm for a while now. And uh, if you look at, say, for instance, Archery Federation, it is split. There are two factions that are fighting, and Archery Federation has lost its recognition with the international body. So uh, these this this situation, it uh, uh, the football situation is is just reflective of what is happening in general in in uh, Indian sport. So what do you uh, what is your opinion on that? Because uh, I mean, you would have come across many more in your in your in your experience, many more officials, many more federations who, who are run, I mean, who are not exactly run, forget the sports code, It's it, it doesn't follow any code at all. <laughs> that is true. It doesn't follow any code. And uh, as I as I feel, the in the last two, two things I feel, one is in the last two, uh, last few, after 2011, when the national sports code came into being, which, which looked very apolitical, the, uh, there, was a, there was a feeling that things are improving. Because all the 56 federations signed the uh, were signed uh, signed the uh, code and they they uh, accepted the code and agreed to abide by the code. But in the last two three years, we are seeing there is an increasing tendency to defy the code by not only the and they are being in, encouraged by several associations, several sports federations, and they are. What is most surprising and uh, sad part of the uh, whole story is they are somehow being encouraged by the Indian Olympic Association. I'm sorry to say this. It looks apparently, not openly, but and also the sports ministry, 
which is supposed to uh, supposed to uh, implement and see the uh, sports code is implemented sometimes doesn't look serious and sometimes they look uh, they have got a pick and choose policy that they will favor someone uh, but will punish someone else for the same same thing doing same thing this is one the, the... and second second thing i feel which is the which is the most worrying part in today's in our today's discussion that whatever has happened in archery or in boxing or wrestling or so many other so many other things it has been such they have been suspended come back we have seen whatever all these things have happened but it had never happened in football before football federation was 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 known in the circle especially in the sports ministry circle one of the best run federations because they were they were they were abiding by the rule they were they were uh, they are, everything was in order but the what has happened now i think all india football federation just because to 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 because of because of some people's eagerness to be there i would say instead of saying can to continue in power in power i would say to be there have reduced football federation to the to the uh, to the uh, line of say archery association or for that matter wrestling or what happened to boxing we know and karate and taekwondo and so many things which you know lessly so that is the most worrying part well that's a, the larger problem here is that when we discuss we i mean firstly the correlation is pretty simple why sports ministry or the ioa is, is party to this or encouraging this uh, i mm. mean uh, not following the national sports code attitude it is got to do with who is at the helm of the of this federation definitely it's, it's always invariably it's not it's not a former footballer which heads the uh, AFF. it's not a former athlete which had i mean uh, any any it's not a boxer which has the boxing federation it's 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 a simple idea that everything is headed by at, on the top it's a politician and they have their own political leanings they have their own party connections and it's all party ultimately it boils down to that it's it's party politics that is happening even in sport so getting back into the uh, the the mess that is indian sport uh, it's affecting the athletes badly that is something that 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 nobody discusses when they discuss these elections and lack of elections or the lack of clarity or infighting and all that when archery federation was suspended by the uh, international body the archers were left in the lurch because they were in the middle of call, trying to qualify for the tokyo games and uh, they had a lot of competitions that they would have loved to attend and there was no clarity who is going to take them out and and also at the same time the funds that the sports ministry releases for these athletes it's it's released via uh, these federations uh, for their foreign trips for their exposures as such exposure trips as such salaries for the foreign coaches that 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 the, the federations employ uh, so all these things uh, i mean it ultimately it boils down to the fact that indian sport is 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 getting affected and it's getting destroyed by this thing and this happens not just at the elite national level or the international level it happens right trickles down right till the state state level or the district level because at the top if there is a faction of course that faction is fueled by the votes that comes from the state body so there is that kind of hierarchy that goes goes down right till the district level so Uh, uh, I, I I personally, if I, if I can uh, mention an anecdote, I since I used to wrestle, and 2002 there was a huge election that happened. I mean, very hotly contested national federation election that happened, and one faction won, the other faction lost, and uh, so what happened? The faction that won, they targeted the. Uh, uh, the state body which didn't state bodies which didn't support them during the election so kerala was uh, one of the state bodies which didn't support and so they uh, fueled the formation of a rebel or a parallel <laughs> yeah, state, state yeah. association in kerala and then uh, so we were caught in the crossfire so i was wrestling at that point uh, uh i didn't know which association should i stand with i i stood with i competed for one body 
I couldn't compete in the nationals since then. And I, for the last three, four years of my competing career, because I had injuries, so I left the sport altogether. Mm. Uh, from 2001 to 2005, I competed judo nationals. I was a wrestler because I couldn't, <laughs> I was debarred from. So this is just a, just an individual story of me, who, I mean, whatever the level that I competed at, which is much lower than the international athletes for sure. But it, it it affected a lot of athletes at the time, a lot of wrestlers at the time. And the same thing continues in, in, in that, that, that makes me angry because I have experienced that pain. I have experienced the difficulties that an athlete faces. So with the, with the churn happening in AFF, I feel that it's, it's, it's positive also uh, for Indian sport in a way because it, the state associations, whatever the reason may, they may, there might be power politics also involved in this move. But it's 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 showing a sign that we could take on the powers, we could get things straightened out in, within our federation if 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 the effort is together. And uh, you yourself have seen these letters that were written. So I believe there is a concerted effort towards uh, I mean, towards achieving something good, or is it something else? Uh, that is the thing. If it is, if it is to, if twenty-one letters and come come in a span of say four or five or six days, then it, it too is a con concerted effort to achieve something good. Then there there is nothing like that, which we, which is a I would say the golden week for Indian Indian sports. But yes. uh, there are there are a uh, lot of ifs and buts written in it, and uh, uh, and skeptics are there. They feel there could be some bigger game being played from behind. Which is uh, hotting up and uh, which is brewing, and finally it will come to uh, come to light. But so far, all the associations I have spoken to, I have not spoken to all 21, but I have spoken to uh, quite a few of them. They all are 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 vehemently denying that there is someone behind it. They all are saying that they have written it on their on their own because they want the uh, election to be held in time. That's what they claim. And on the face value at the moment, since we have no other evidence, we have to accept it. And though it's 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 uh, slightly disturbing that at this juncture of 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 where we are as a country, uh, people still have to fight for elections to be held. But that's the truth. That's the reality. But at least that that fight is is a positive sign. I feel because then more federations can can understand how things can be. I end out things can be weeded out for the larger good of Indian sport, larger good for good of athletes, and larger good of the people in, uh, involved. Thanks, Jayadeep, for the for the time, and it was as usual great talking to you. Thank you, thank you so much, Leslie. Great talking to you. In our next segment, we bring you part of a conversation between Dr. Ajay Gudavarthi of Jawaharlal Nehru University and News Clicks Prabir Purkaista. They're talking about the enduring relevance of Marxist thinker and activist Frederick Engels. November 28th marked the 200th birth anniversary of Engels, a man of many talents and interests, whose writings continue to have an influence on political thought and action to this day. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us. So, Dr. Ajay, I wanted to start with you first on this theme of Engels not being really uh, seen as an original thinker in his own right. And you talked about this as well, uh, because he's, in fact, long before uh, Capital came out, or long before some of Marx's other works came out, Engels was also someone who was carrying out a lot of studies from a very Marxist perspective. So could you talk a bit about this? Yeah, thanks, Prashant. Uh, yeah, you know, you go back to history. Uh, Engels, uh, in fact, wrote uh, his first volume, The Conditions of the Working Class in England, much before he met uh, Marx, and uh, he wrote it uh, being himself belonging to a kind of a bourgeois family. Uh, uh, he was looking into the working classes. And if you read that uh, book on English, uh, uh, that working class, uh, it gives extremely detailed sociological uh, first-hand experiential account of what the uh, working class went through. I think this uh, brings uh, that, and, and that was actually the basis for the friendship uh, with Marx later on you know they met in a cafe and that's how we started and Marx said that uh, repeatedly Marx mentions that in a couple of places that angels arrived at a similar conclusion uh, independent of uh, Marx. So uh, in that sense I think angels was also in a, uh, in a very original sense inaugurated uh, the uh, materialist 
uh, historical materialists or what they refer to as new materialism. And this we need to see in the context of the uh, 19th century, you know, that where there was uh, Hegelian idealism in uh, all pervasive. Uh, angels were, took the first step to bringing it to a kind of a materialist uh, history. And it's interesting you mentioned materialism and Prabir, I'm going to come to you on this because you just recently wrote an article about uh, reading Engels today. And one of his enduring contributions has been in how we understand science or the philosophy of science. And this is not again, not just a theoretical or an academic perspective, but something that is very much rooted in struggles in perspectives by uh, scientists as well. So could you maybe take us to how some of his writings actually shaped how we understand science today? Before I do that, there are two aspects of Engels that I think we should really register. One is that he was a polymath. He did dabble with various things. He read vast amounts. He knew 20 languages. So he is one of the minds who was quick, who had a very wide ranging interest. Like Marx, Marx also has a huge wide ranging interest. They were not limited to looking at philosophy, history or economics. They really did a very large vista of things that they were interested in and they worked on. Both Engels and Marx are important. In their importance is also that they looked at how production technology was changing society. And to that extent, there was a kind of division of labor. So both knew what each other was doing and reading that Engels would focus more on science and Marx would look at more on history of technology as it was changing. And both of them put together and look at the development of productive forces in England as it applied to the textile industry. And that if you look at Capital Volume 1, you will see Marx is a brilliant historian of technology. And he, if you see somebody who could have founded the discipline, then Capital Volume 1, according to me, is the best description of his, his historical view of how technology changes society. Engels looked at far beyond the immediate issues as well. He was interested in looking at chemistry, he was interested in looking at physics. And also, he, in his uh, dialectics of nature, there is this role of labor in human evolution, where he talks about how the hand evolves because of labor. It is not only the, that it produces labor, but it is also the product of labor. And this vision of how the evolutionary process takes place in nature is something which is quite original at that point of time. People claim that he was Lamarckian, he was not good and so on and so forth. They forget. Even Darwin was Lamarckian at the time. In his theory of evolution, one of the arguments he gives, apart from natural selection, one of the driving forces he considers is Lamarckian inheritance. So that was not an, uh, something which is uh, not mainstream at the time. It was very much a mainstream view and cutting edge biological view at the time. It changes only when Mendelian genetics becomes more widely known. So that's, that's really the uh, mark of time. But the interesting part is, of course, both Marx and Engels and Engels uh, was uh, they asked by Marx to write on people like Dürer, who were spreading a lot of confusion regarding science, regarding socialism to be derived from absolute principles, which is why Engels calls Dürer metaphysical, that it is not changing, is to be derived from some fundamental principles which are developed through logic, and that logic does not consider change in itself. And that's, I think, the major contribution when you look at anti during that it is a view of nature, it's a view of nature in change, and it's a principles of philosophy being enunciated, which puts at the heart of it what is change, that you are not talking of absolute categories that from which you derive everything else, but you are considering motion in nature, and therefore also motion in society. If I put it in today's terms, it would be you consider that change is something which is constant, that there is nothing which is static, which does not change. And this is what in physics would be called motion, matter in motion. There is nothing called matter which is completely steady. It is always in motion and almost, all, always in the state of change. And this is the dialectics versus metaphysics, which is what I think at that time philosophy really was referring to. Today, when we look at it, 
we don't know what we really mean by metaphysics at that time. And we don't know, therefore, what is the dialectics being talked about. But that is the problem of reading something 200 years later and then trying to understand what was the framing at that point of time. But even if we look at it today, this is something which is even today we need to look at the consideration that are we trying to de develop from absolute principles some something which is say justice or are you trying to talk about it in the context of societal change and i think that's central to both the sciences and it is also true for society and i think that's where engels major contribution lies both as a polemicist both the task that he was given by Marx to polemicize against people like Hegel's, but also original views on how science was shaping uh, philosophy, how science was shaping other things. And of course, as I said, both of them put together how science and technology shaped society itself. That's all your time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the country. Until then, keep watching NewsClick. Thank <laughs> you.